internet friends and welcome back. Today uh, is going to be a little bit different of a video. It isn't all about video. However, today we're talking all about 24 hour urine collection. So this is a test that's done for my doctor. He ordered it and I have to take this container and collect my urine for 24 hours. I haven't used it yet, don't worry. But regardless, this is still a little bit of a weird topic for anyone involved. We're talking about my pee, let's be real. So what I have to do this for is it's called a cortisol test and that measures the, um, it, it tests my adrenal glands. And your adrenal glands produce adrenaline and I have problems with adrenaline surges and what we're wondering, my doctor and I, we're trying to figure out if my high heart rate mixed with my high blood pressure is for, from hyperadrenergic postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. It's a mouthful, I know, but basically it means that since my heart rate and my blood pressure both go up instead of my blood pressure dropping when my heart rate increases, that is usually the hallmark sign for it being a problem with your adrenal glands. The test that I have here is the easiest and best way to figure it out because the level of cortisol in your body fluctuates at different points during the day. Uh, so if my doctor were to just take a pee sample from me, a urine sample, uh, when I was at the doctor, or if he were to take my blood right when I was at the doctor, it may not come out as having a problem with my cortisol levels. So usually your cortisol levels, I believe, are the highest at uh, around midnight or, no, I'm sorry, they're the lowest around midnight and they're the highest sometime in, during the day. So hopefully this will sort it out. Um, so what I have to do with this is this container here has acetic acid in it. It says it has 25, milli uh, 25 milliliters of 50% acetic acid in it. Um, you guys can check that out if you want there. So I have to, first when I woke up this morning, I had to empty my bladder into the toilet as usual as most people would do and from this point onward throughout today and part way through tomorrow for the 24 hour period I need to go ahead and pee into that bucket jar thing jug let's call it a jug I have to pee into the jug for the next 24 hours and the acetic acid is going to make sure that the urine stays fresh yes I do have to refrigerate my urine Sorry family, um, but we're going to use a little mini fridge that we have underneath our water cooler, so that'll work just fine. Um, they also gave me this sheet here, and this is just my patient instructions. Um, it says that some preservatives were added to the container, and sometimes these preservatives can be extremely corrosive because they're acids which mine is, so don't get it on your skin, and if you do get it on your skin, uh, flush the area immediately with water, um, and that, you know, I do what I first did, I pass my urine into the toilet the first time, and then from that point on, collect my urine into the jug, and then it says, oh, where is it? At the end of the 24 hour collection, of uh, the bladder must be emptied one last time and the urine added to the container. So at the end of the 24 hours, after I've been collecting my urine for all of this time, I need to empty my bladder one last time, whether I feel like I need to or not, uh, and then put that into the jug, and then I need to drive my pee across town to my doctor's office so that they can study it afterwards. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much that, um, and when you see in just a second, for you, but several times for me, I'll give you guys an update and see how it is peeing into that jug, because it's quite tall, and thankfully it has a wide mouth, because I'm a girl, um, but yeah, I'll let you guys know in a little bit. Hey guys, it's the next day. 
and I have finally completed my 24-hour urine collection test, also known as the cortisol test or affectionately known as the pee test by me. I have finally finished that off and I have brought everything back to the doctors. So, how did it go? Well, the answer is it wasn't so easy. It was not nearly as easy as I thought it would be, um, and there's a lot more nitty gritty along with that. So if you don't care about TMI, follow me along. So basically, um, it was difficult to pee while standing up, just to put it nice and short and sweet. Because of how tall the container was, I had to practically stand while hunched over the toilet just in case I miss. Which by the way, I did. Like at least three to four times I peed all over myself and that was not nearly fun either. But the awkward part was I had to be standing to pee which as a girl that does not come naturally. Those two don't commute together. Compute together. So I got pee shy. Like really pee shy. Like what happened was I was so pee shy that everything was coming up in dribbles and not the way that it should. When it was all said and done, I still had what I think is about a decent amount, um, and the test itself wasn't hard. The acetic acid did have a smell to it that was kind of like aged vinegar, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So that, every time I had to open up a container, I smelled aged vinegar and that wasn't too great either, but I suppose that's better than smelling the alternative, which is urine. But anyway, it wasn't very hard and I hope that this will help anybody who has to go through this and I hope that I don't have to do this again, but my doctor did tell me that if results aren't found out from this one, that I may have to go through it again. And in that case, I'm sure you'll be seeing that too. So with that, I hope you all have a great day, stay happy, stay positive, peace guys.